so we were discussing about the two kingdom classification system in our last class and we will be continuing the uh, session with the same slides which we were discussing in our previous class two kingdom classification system as we have discussed in our uh, last class was given by the lineus and uh, we have also discussed that these plant and animals was not given by this linear for the first time uh, instead aristotle has also divided the living organism as a whole in plant kingdom and animal kingdom but here the lineus has categorized whole living organism into two group based on the this specific uh, characters okay and main where the locomotion response to stimuli mode of nutrition and presence or absence of cell wall so these are the main criteria that was used by the lineus to classify the whole living organism into two different categories okay and that were the planty and animalia the kingdom planty includes the organism which were fixed at one place that means they are immobile okay they are sedentary they have got roots that are fixed on the substratum and they are attached in that particular point in that particular place throughout their life they are sedentary they cannot move or they will not move so that was first character and the other one is they have got this spread out appearance that means they have got these roots which are also branch and contain lots and lots of secondary roots and tertiary roots right and they have got the stem which has even uh, divided into branches and that branches will again produce into leaves so they have got this wide spread out appearance okay but the animals doesn't have those type of structure right the other is that the plant prepare their own food they have this autotrophic mode of nutrition they can prepare their own food they have the chloroplast in them they have these different types of photosynthetic pigments like chlorophyll a chlorophyll b phycobilins or the xanthophylls carotenoids right so they have got these different types of photosynthetic pigments that help them to capture the light or simply absorb the light and that light energy is then used to prepare or fix the carbon dioxide into the form of starts and the plants contain these large permanent vacuoles inside their cell okay so that is also other different character and these exhibited a very slow response toward the external stimuli bhanne cha it is a general character right plants doesn't show a rapid response to any external stimuli the other thing is that the food in these plants are stored in the form of starts and they have got the cell wall outside the cell membrane which is also the unique for the plants okay but uh, in the animal the first thing that we can observe which is different than that of the plants are they could move they have got this locomotive organ like legs or wings or anything that help them to move they are not sedentary and they have got this compact body appearance they have got a fixed uh, type of body structure and they are and the body is also compact and the other thing is that they cannot prepare their own food or they have got this heterotrophic mode of nutrition and the animal cells don't have this permanent vacuoles okay the cells may entirely lack the vacuoles or there may be tiny very small type of numerous small vacuoles present in the animal cells okay so that is also quite different from that of the plant cells okay they show a quick response toward the external stimuli and the stored food is stored in the form of glycogen and also the oil droplets they lack cellulosic cell wall they don't have cell wall okay so the first and foremost disadvantage or limitations of the system is that they do not distinguish the unicellular or multicellular organism unde le tya unicellular yo multicellular is to cellular level ma here ke chan plus they have not got that very specific microscope or very magnifiable microscope that can see the difference on the nucleus ai te bara prokaryotic eukaryotic bhanne te dekhera kehi thena so uh, there were no any distinction between the eukaryotic organism and prokaryotic organism plus this system doesn't see doesn't different completely the photosynthetic and non photosynthetic organism okay for example the planty the planty kingdom contains all whether the photosynthetic or non photosynthetic fungi are also kept with the plants but fungi are the heterotrophic 
right they cannot prepare their own food by photosynthesis process so they are non photosynthesis however they are kept with the plants so that is also the demerits or the limitations of this two kingdom system of classification the other thing is that there are a few organism that is not classified like lichens are not classified slime molds are not classified they doesn't fall into either category neither the plants nor the animals and the other thing is that the exact position or the category or the class of unicellular organisms like euglena chlamydomonas are not exact so that is also the drawback of this system so that completes our two kingdom system of classification okay and with the course of development of the science there have been discovery of many microorganism which has got this both animal and plant like character so there is a major conflict dividing or categorizing or classifying these different types of microorganism into only two categories or two kingdoms so say organisms such as slime molds resemble the plants in the mode of reproduction whereas the nutrition is similar to the animals so there arises the three kingdom classification which is given by the ornest haeckel in 1866 Ernest Haeckel uh, proposed a third kingdom and he named it as a Protista. So he introduced a new kingdom named as Protista and he included all the living unicellular organism in that particular kingdom. So Protista include the algae, the fungi, the protozoans, even slime molds and the bacteria. So all of these different types of organism are classified under the new kingdom. by the ornest haeckel so the main demerit of this system is that this protista contains a whole bunch of organism that doesn't relate to each other there is the heterotrophic organism there are this algae which are phototrophic or autotrophic there are slime molds there are even bacteria so all of these different types of organism that doesn't relate to each other are kept under a same kingdom named as protista so that was the major demerit of ornest haeckel classification system virus being the non cellular were not kept in this classification system or ko demerit ke pan cha bhanda hari with the course of time uh, the scientists have now known that organism can be classified into two different categories based on their cells that is prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell so this type of concept was not given by the ornest haeckel so the ornest haeckel or this three kingdom classification system could not classify the organism living organism into the classes based upon its cell character so now there comes a new kingdom and with the addition of new kingdom the name also changes into the four kingdom classification system in the mid 20th century there was the development of electron microscopy so with this development of the microscopy the scientific community now know that the whole organism can be classified based on the cell they contain so this new thing this prokaryotic and eukaryotic thing arise and with these comes the new kingdom eukaryotic cell have the true nucleus or advanced nucleus that comes with the nuclear membrane nucleoplasm and nucleolus and inside it there is the dna okay and this dna is not simply a just a thread like structure however it contains the association of histone protein the dna and bind it to form a chromosome so that was the main character of eukaryotic cell plus there were also bunch of other cell organelles like mitochondria chloroplast golgi bodies er है तो क्या होता है यूकैरिटिक सेल में आ प्रोकैरिटिक में हेरा चाहिए फिर कस्तो देर इज नो एनी ट्रू न्यूक्लियस दैट मीन्स देर इज द डीएनए इन द सेंटर ऑफ द सेल हाई द डीएनए और न्यूक्लिक मेटेरियल सिंपली डैंगल्स इन द सेंट्रल पार्ट ऑफ द प्रोकैरिटिक सेल बट देर इज नथिंग टू कवर इट देर इज नो एनी न्यूक्लियर मेम्रेन देर इज नो एनी न्यूक्लियोप्लाजम नो न्यूक्लियोलस सो देर इज नथिंग to call it as a nucleus uh, the nucleus is only represented by a dna and that type of primitive nucleus is known as nucleoid or genophore hey eh? and that nucleic material or the simply dna is also lacking very much for example the dna of the prokaryotic doesn't have the association of histone protein or you can say it is a naked type okay so in the eukaryotic cells Uh, for example these are the histone protein histone protein bhai there is yes to histone protein huncha ke histone protein panch kisim ko huncha and this histone protein 
गिव द डीएनए गिव द प्लेस टू बाइंड ओपन जस्ते यहाँ ओरिपरि चाहिँ अब चाहिँ के हुन्छ त यसरी डीएनए बाइंड हुने हो है जस्ते तिमीहरुले यो कलम मा चाहिँ यहाँ रे कलम मा चाहिँ धागो बेरे जस्तो के है अब धागो बेर्नु छ भने केही न केही त चाहियो नि त त्यतिकै धागो बेरिन्छ आफैमा यहाँ के हुन्छ त यसरी एउटा डट पेन भयो भने तिमीहरुले सजिलै सके यसरी धागो डट पेन मा बेर्न सक्यो ओके न सेम त्यस्तै डीएनए चाहिँ क्रोमोजोम मा कसरी चेन्ज हुन्छ भन्दा यो त सिक्वेन्सियल प्रोसेस हुन्छ तर सुरुको स्टेप चाहिँ के हुन्छ त भन्दा डीएनए विल बी बाइंडिङ अर क्वाइलिङ अराउन्ड डिफरेन्ट टाइप्स अफ प्रोटिन नोन एज हिस्टोन प्रोटिन है यसरी चारटा हुन्छ यहाँ अनि यहाँ बाहिरबाट अर्को अब यो नेम पनि हुन्छ नेमहरु चाहिँ के भन्नु है एन्ड दिस टाइप अफ कम्प्लेक्स अरेंजमेन्ट अफ द डीएनए इन्टु द क्रोमोजोम इज सीन अन द प्रोकैरियोटिक सेल बट नॉट इन द प्रोकैरियोटिक सेल सो इफ दिस इज द प्रोकैरियोटिक सेल द डीएनए विल बी सिंपली लाइंग इन द सेंटर अफ द सेल एन्ड इट इज अ सर्कुलर टाइप एन्ड द अदर थिंग इज दैट देयर इज नो एनी सेल ऑर्गेनेल या के छैन न क्लोरोप्लास्ट छ न माइटोकोन्ड्रिया छ या के पनि छैन अनि यहाँ भएको जम्मा राइबोसोम हेरु पनि के हुन्छ त राइबोसोम इज अल्सो अफ 70s टाइप सानो छ नि थाहा छ नि हैन 70s 80s भनेको त पढेको छ होला अनि s को मिनिङ चाहिँ के हो त स्वेडबर्ग युनिट है यो याद राखिराख्नु ओके सो दिस वाज द मेन डिफरेंसिएटिंग पोइन्ट्स अफ दिस प्रोकैरियोटिक एन्ड यूकैरियोटिक सेल्स and the organism that contain the prokaryotic cell is known as prokaryotes and for the organism that contains the eukaryotic cell is known as eukaryotes hai to pan samjhi rakhnu okay so uh, with this knowledge of two different types of cells the american biologist herbert copland now proposed a next a uh, new kingdom known as monera esari monera bhanera usle chutte euta kingdom प्रपोज गरे प्रोकैरियोटिक अर्गनिजम सब लाइक ग्रुप कर उनके मोनेरा भिंगडम में मर्ज गए एक ही ठाक में राखे सो हि हेव क्लासिफाइड द लिविंग अर्गनिजम इंटू दिस फोर डिफ्रेंट किंगडम्स मोनेरा प्रोटिस्टा और प्रोटोक्टिस्टा प्लांटिंग एंड एनिमल्स विच कैन बी कैटेगोराइज बेस्ड अन डिफ्रेंट क्राइटेरियाज हाई प्रोकैरियोटिक यू मत भो अर सब के भाई तैं यू कैरेटिक अनि यो युकैरियोटिक भित्र पनि के छ नि त प्रोटिस्टा अनि प्रोटोक्टिस्टामा के भयो त युनिसेलुलर अल मल्टिसेलुलर युकैरियोटिक अर्गनिजमहरु आउने भयो है प्लान्टीमा के आउने भयो प्लान्टी कन्टेन्स द युकैरियोटिक मल्टिसेलुलर अटोट्रोपिक अर्गनिजम एनिमलिया इन्क्लुड्स अल द मल्टिसेलुलर अर्गनिजम विथ हेटेट्रोपिक मोड अफ न्यूट्रिसन भन्दा छ उसको मेन ड्रब्याक चाहिँ के होला भन्दाखेरि यो ब्याक्टेरियाहरु पनि त दुई खालका छन् ओके न एन्सियन्ट ब्याक्टेरियाहरु पनि छन् अलि डेभलप काइन्ड अफ ब्याक्टेरिया पनि छन् ओके न अब प्रोटिस्टामै हेर्ने हो भने अब प्रोटिस्टामै के छ त फङ्गाई पनि छ एल्गी पनि छ प्रोटोजोआ पनि छ ओके न भेराइबल मोड अफ न्युट्रिसन भएको एकदम खिचडी त त्यहीँ छँदै छ अझै पनि प्रोटिस्टा त त्यही खिचडी नै भयो सो त्यसलाई पनि उनले सुधार्न सकेनन् केवल ब्याक्टेरियालाई मात्रै छुट्याए ओके न सो अल इज आर द लिमिटेसन्स अफ द फोर किङ्गडम सिस्टम अफ क्लासिफिकेसन है अब यसलाई सुधार्ने अब अझै के आउँछ त फाइभ किङ्गडम सिस्टम अफ क्लासिफिकेसन आउँछ अनि त्यहाँदेखि थ्री डोमेन्स भन्ने पनि पढेको पढेको छ कि छैन तिमीहरूले है त्यो पनि पढ्नुपर्छ तर आजको लागि चाहिँ मैले यहीँसम्म पढाएँ है त ल